All right, so let's go ahead and get started. Um, thanks everybody for attending this is, and joining our JIRA Workflow Best Practices webinar. We're recording this session and we'll submit a link to the recording over the next few days. Our next webinar is scheduled for July 8th at 11 a.m. Central. This webinar is designed to teach you about maximizing your use of Atlassian's dev tools through integration and best practices. As you have questions, please be sure to provide them via the questions utility in the GoToWebinar control panel. We'll queue them up and answer them towards the end of the session. So on the phone today from Precipio Consulting, we have Joseph Lane. Joseph Lane is a partner over process architecting and improvement and he'll be presenting today's webinar. My name is Shayla Sander. I'm a business development manager for Precipio Consulting and I'll be serving as your moderator. We've been Atlassian expert partners for over six years now and are one of five platinum enterprise experts in the country. Over 99% of our projects are Atlassian related and we have hundreds of clients across the U.S. ranging in size from 20 person companies to Fortune 20 enterprises spanning many different industries. As Atlassian experts, we help our clients with process centric technology solutions that facilitate traditional business process management. IT, services, IT service management based on idle and software development life cycles. In the SDLC space, we're helping clients transition from waterfall to agile. So whatever widgets you produce, we help improve the quality and throughput at the lowest cost. We support our clients in all facets of the Atlassian product suite and build methodologies and solutions across the entire product line. This includes licensing, upgrades and maintenance, managed services, solutions, integrations, hosting, training, and add-on development. And so now let's turn things over to Joseph to lead us through today's webinar. Thank you, Shayla. As mentioned, I'm Joseph Lane, partner here at Precipio Consulting over business process improvement. My team's focus is to help our clients implement their business processes in JIRA, Confluence, and other related tools. Today, we'll be providing a primer on workflows. Starting off, we'll discuss anatomy and mechanics to cover fundamental workflow concepts that are used across technologies, not just JIRA. Next, we'll look into business requirements to discuss how business requirements are implemented in JIRA, as well as best practices for maximizing user adoption. We'll then move over to JIRA to build out a simple approval workflow before wrapping up with answers to your questions. A note of caution before we begin. There's an assumed amount of expertise on behalf of the audience in regard to its experience around JIRA administration. Please exercise caution when working in any production JIRA instance. Not all of the knowledge required to be a functional JIRA admin is described in this webinar. With that being said, let's get started talking about workflows with a base introduction to the foundational concepts. JIRA leverages the state machine model for describing its workflows. This model is commonly used by computer scientists, mathematicians, engineers, and others to model processes from low-level software protocols to human-machine interactions. State machines describe process with limited set of states. A workflow item can only be in one state at any given time. From a state, an item can progress to another state via a transition. We'll elaborate these concepts shortly. While state machines aren't glamorous, they do make a lot of sense for describing the work that we track in JIRA. We don't expect JIRA to do work for us, rather we expect it to describe where our work currently is. Keeping this in mind, we'll see that state, or status as it's known in JIRA, will be at the core of our workflow. Status describes where a workflow item is in its life cycle. Administrators associate a category, color, and description of statuses when creating them. These colors can be seen through the application and in JIRA Agile progress bars. New, or blue statuses, indicate the beginning of a process. You can also use this for describing handoff statuses that indicate new work for a team. Think about handoffs like that between a software developer and the testing team. In progress, or yellow statuses, indicate that the workflow item is currently being worked on. Complete, or green statuses, indicate that work has been finished. Keep in mind that in some cases, we may use a status like resolved to indicate work is complete but still requires validation, as you'd see in a service desk. Transitions are tied to statuses and describe how we exit the status. It's at the transition where we can define the core of our business rules. Here we can put conditions and validators against the workflow item to enable process controls. 
Additionally, we can collect information from the user in a time-sensitive fashion as we progress through the workflow. It's common to have decision points and workflows. In practice, this translates to having multiple transitions out of a single status. Once we create the base transition from one status to another, we'll be able to elaborate the definition further. The condition configuration is used to prevent execution of transition until a set of criteria evaluates to true. Conditions are our best way of enforcing business rules. As an example, we may set a simple condition to allow only members of a QA role to execute pass or fail transitions. We may also define complex business rules through the use of condition grouping. Once the user clicks an available transition, the screen configuration item provides us with two main advantages. First, we're able to capture information as we transition from one status to another in a process relevant fashion. Second, we're able to pause the transition to get confirmation of intent. A transition without a screen will immediately change status. Please note, transition screens that contain the resolution field will collect that value from the user and set the resolution timestamp. This is critical when defining closure or resolution of an issue. Do not include resolution on create or edit issue type screens. Validators will allow us to do a check against information in a JIRA issue or for things like a field changing value on a transition before completing the transition. This is critical for enforcing data and communications integrity. As an example, we'll often require a comment on a transition when reopening a closed issue. Following validation, we will have post functions that fire off automatically to set or clear values, trigger notifications, and other automated functions. Through the use of add-ons, we can even create related issues or subtasks. For all transitions, we also have the option of setting properties like we saw with status. The primary property I find myself using is OpsBar sequence for setting the correct sequence of transitions. Use orders of 10 so that you can have the opportunity to interject other transitions down the line. Keep in mind, Atlassian documentation on the subject does provide a note of caution. There are some undesirable behaviors associated with properties, so perform your due diligence. Finally, there's new functionality in JIRA that allows us to automatically trigger the transition of an issue. These triggers happen based on events in an associated code repository, like the creation of a feature branch or the check-in of code.